would simply rodents and small mammals be enough to start a whole zoo, surviving cats invading their homes, extreme weathers, while making unique environments and somehow still maintaining our guests and profits, dealing through all the death and sly escapes, and at the end, finally bringing back and seeing if my zoo could survive something called the neglect. Anyways, I'll be trying to survive 25 years building a zoo using only rodents in Panda Zoo, and our journey starts in sunny Asia. After spending a long time experimenting with pads, and I don't really want our guests overcrowding, so I maxed out the width of the pads and built a large square plaza connected to the zoo entrance. I decided to expand some staff routes far into the side of our zoo, making a staff section. They can negatively impact our guests as seen in this heat map, so we'll have them far away. Or maybe I'm trying to hide overworking my staff. Anyways, with our essential facilities placed, I started with the foundations of our plaza center with mulch and fences. I know it looks like poop now, but just you wait. Oh, and on top of that, an information center and balloon shop to jumpstart our money stealing scheme. <laughs> I mean, boost education and sales. With all of that done, we can now start picking out our first animals. In my last playthrough, hard shelters for hiding was a pretty common issue, and with rodents, oh, their hiding is pretty important. So after skimming through a few options, I went along to just building walls over a roof structure and connected a habitat gate and a little staff route for our keepers to enter. With that all settled, this game has a zoopedia that gives you all the information to each animal, including land water requirements, group size they need, biomes, and even if they're shy to humans. After a quick scan, I landed on the striped skunks. Small and relatively easy to maintain, so I figured they're the easiest to start with. So after layouting out the barriers to our little humble skunk burrow, going for a glass display and a wooden backdrop, I went shopping for our first few teeny friends with the little budget I have from the trading center. Oh wait, I don't have any staff yet, so before that I went out and hired our first few staffs and put them into work. These staff work under these things called a work zone, which basically covers all their access to each facility or habitat selected into them. I quickly name one, the Rodent Kingdom. I'm optimistic, okay? And assign all my new staffs to the work zone. Just in time, our first residents to the Keelings Burrow are getting put in. The Striped Skunks. Off into the cruel, cruel, merciless evil world they go. Um, yeah, with them inside the habitat, I could then look at all the necessary conditions they need to keep them happy. First out of them is terrain. For depth, I pulled some small hills into the back of the habitat where I worked on a stony backdrop. It was a lot of rock rotating, a lot of rocks. And after I got a good background and some sexy clusters of stones, I placed a burrow for them and continued to paint on different textures of surface like dirt and grass according to my skunk's liking. Also, nesting bed for you. Onto the planting phase, I propped up some ash trees into the back and seasoned some bushes all around. Finally, because skunks love the undergrowth, a few fallen trees, grass, teeny sticks, heck, even some toys, and I called it done. <laughs> And it seems we are open. A small crowd seems to be forming for our little fellas, and what better way to squeeze them out of money than putting up education boards to lure them in and donation boxes. Except I forgot the donation bins. But research is also available in this game, and you could use the vets and mechanics you hire to undergo research on animals and even facilities to unlock enrichment bonuses and new building features. Here, I started on our skunks and worked towards level 5 barriers where I'll get one-way glass. It's gonna be useful, guys. I'm not a skunk pervert, I swear. Anyways, we have Snoop and Snittle who are now hiding in the rain. And what in the... Alright, I guess now we have a famous rock. At this point, our zoo is off to a great start, and looking at our guest overview, there seems to be only one issue. Ah, what super unique and different animal can we introduce next? Badgers. <laughs> These European badgers, they um, don't look that different from the skunks, but they're cheap and we get to make a bigger habitat, so it's perfect. I stretch out more big old sausage pads and start building up the badger's home. Even rocked it up a little bit, and our skunks still don't really like the rain. I figured having a low glass barrier for the bigger enclosures like this will allow better viewing for our guests and begin to raining islands of dirt humps that will separate the habitat. We'll see why. We got our new trio into the habitat, and yes, Lewis here is an albino, so hopefully he and his new friends will shoot out albino babies from their badger goals. Ew. With them inside, we can accordingly lather a layer of soil over greener accents and start shaping the structures. In real life, these badgers scavenge the shrublands of Europe down to its drier woodlands, so I wanted to capture both in this habitat. With a rocky backdrop and entrance to a burrow, I played around with the trees that will work well with the bushes I put around them after. With more and more natural features I added to the habitat, the environment look of it came together pretty nicely. Then, after adding grass, repaints, a bit more rocks, and the final dry wooded grass fields, the badger paradise is finally done. See, they're settling quite nicely inside the holes. A good protection from the rain and the villains later on in the video. I check for escape routes using the heat map and it looked like we're good. Okay, come on, man, what are you doing? As you can see, I spent almost all my money on this little project, but it seemed like our zoo had a super successful opening. So I used the timeless 1 2 education board and donation bin combo to get some of my money back. And look, I finally remembered to put some on the stripes skunks too. In efforts to skyrocket the money coming in, I have the perfect plan. But before that, let me first tell you my goals for the zoo and about the neglect and cat invasion our zoo will experience later on in the video. The challenge is to start 
smart and grow zoo only using rodents. And yes, most of them are just tiny mammals, but they're close enough to rodents, so let me be okay. With that, I want to pass a thousand visitors for my zoo and make a whopping $250,000 in the bank, despite the low, low appeal of these rodents. Also, some essential true rodents that will be a must for my kingdom are the prairie dogs, the North American beavers, which I've always liked as a kid, look at them, and of course, the glorious and almighty capybaras. Alongside this, we'll have to be making the most beautiful habitats for each of our furry friends. On top of that, this time we'll be trying to produce as much leucistic or albino offsprings as we can, which are basically rare white pigmented variants of the animals we can get during breeding. At the end of it all, we'll see if our zoo survives the neglect and a cat invasion, which will be me increasing the speed of the game three folds and leaving it to run over 15 to 20 minutes real time, while some cat friends of ours will be released into the rodents' enclosures. And you won't believe how crazy that will go. So let's get back to work. Well, in the middle of year five, it seemed with this many guests, we had a little problem with trash and money, so I wanted to make a better and more attractive furball next. But first, I placed a few benches, trash, and recycle bins, even created a little park with seats, shade, and some snacks, because look at these food gobblers. This would surely get the money up though, but you know what else would? Aesthetics. What better way to hook our guests than with a rodent shrine? So I lined up a display with raccoons that are worshipping, you guessed it, the greatest rodent of all. And one copy by the king. I don't have any other crown, so that will do. Our kingdom will now flourish under the blessings of- oh. Hello there, I'll name you Jimbo. Anyways, I scattered a few nice rocks and a mix of different trees. A little more additions and voila, our plaza is finally done. Isn't it pretty? Just in time, our first inspection report has came and look who's been working in the baby department. <laughs> what a beautiful moment. Surely nothing will ruin such a wonderful- Damn it, Jimbo, you loser. Okay, apparently one of our badges escaped, and you can see the escape routes using the traversable area map, so goodbye. But look here, our first baby. I could eat it. Beside that, our rock has seemed to be growing a cult following on its own, so I'll take advantage and, um, money. Oh yeah, anyways, more attractive fur balls. Let's get to it. The zoo was in a good enough position for our guests to think the price is too low, so I increased the ticket price, and with the money I got, browsed the zoopedia for better looking rodents. I wanted a more unique habitat, and after a while, who else a better candidate than our wet brownies of mischief? Authors. Okay, I thought I would do something different and create a complete underwater viewing for our guests and a land part in the back for them to hide. So I started with the new water treatment facility and built a glass barrier and terrain around it that will be the foundations to this habitat. Now, after satisfied, I chipped away land, messed with the water, and spent what seemed like hours figuring out the layout of the lake. And with everything else, surprise, surprise, we used more rocks. Anyways, I kind of blacked out, rocked everything, and made a ramp, and boom, I made an arch waterfall thing. Using these special effects like water jets and water flows to simulate water rushing. Ah, and welcoming to our new homes are Asian small cloud authors. Puspita, Otto, Mawar. Coincidentally, a lot of flower names from my country. But we still needed more plants, and after seeding the water with pots of lilies across the rock line, a little fish feeder down there, and a generous mix of tropical trees all around. Gosh, I love my zoo. Finally, the otter lake is done. Ah, and my little money makers, I mean precious children. These guys seem to be also quite fussy about temperature, so I placed a few heaters for the time being. On the other side, looking back at our skunks, our first baby apparently is now an outsider, which is a new thing in the game where basically after juveniles that mature, their parents will not love them anymore. Hence, child neglect. Oh man, just look at her. I'll make sure she's okay though. Keep her taken care of and not get distracted by any- Ooh, look, my others can jump. And like roll. Mm -hmm. Get the room, you guys. I'll look at this beautiful habitat, and thanks to it, business has been totally booming. So booming in fact that after cleaning a few zoo errors, I fit in a few more hires to help around the zoo, and open a Bernie's Bake Shop! This is like a canon event for all Planet Zoo players. And with everyone seemingly happy, I think it's time we introduce our first villain. Ah, but first a toilet block that decorated all prairie doggy. It's a rodent meeting, that's all I can think of. And because our education levels are still quite low, we set up a few conservation boards around that teaches stuff like frog extinction, and many more. Followed by the expansion of the zoo's power and staff routes. I had some free time too, and in this game, staff facilities actually can increase their efficiency if they have a better view around them. Kind of spoiled if you ask me, but oh well. Ah, just gorgeous, right? Wait, what are we supposed to do again? Okay, okay, for this one, I wanted a path that overlooked the whole enclosure, so I started with this elevated road and a bigger hard shelter nested right into the gap of the bridge. <laughs> with the habitat official, our first villains of this story is going to be... The Caracals! A diet mostly of rodents and in some days, even a small antelope. So I set up their nest box even with a little antelope punching bag to release some stress. This time, I wanted to use snow barriers, which are basically invisible barriers, so I could still have a habitat with full creative freedom on my walls. And what did I do? That's right, rocks. Big structured ones, and then detailed with much smaller ones over it for the whole wall. Desert canyons was what I was going for, so after sanding a few islands and other gritty textures, the rest was just fitting in the pebbles until it looks omega sexy. After some final details, and slowly figuring out the look of the enclosure, then we welcome our first two villains. Later on in the video, they'll be released into some of our other enclosures, so stay tuned. Wait a minute, don't you dare. You better get down from there, mister. Okay, goddammit. 
Alright, aside from that, our characters are settling in very nicely, and that won't be our only villain. But to focus on the build, I didn't realize how crowded my zoo had gotten and the amount of trash around is going crazy. I put bins everywhere while also fixing this ongoing issue with my authors and their temperature. And a skunk mascot for our infamous rock. Guys, please come back. Uh, and we also need some help in the money department because we have a goal, people. But like a slap back to reality, it seems Snittle, our first residence of the Rona Kingdom, has died of old age. Reswell Snitty. There, there. You and me both, man. Wait, what? You moved on that quick? <gasps> Not you too, Snoop. No. But hey, at least Mrs. Inspection Reporter is liking our zoo. Ah, and what's going on with our badgers? Okay, didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I figured we don't have all the time in the world and we need to get more animals for some money, so... Ah, beautiful barren grassland for our first true rodents. Grasslands that unfortunately this little prairie dogs will destroy. Big free, my children. A small little desert corner for our zoo finally done and it complements our other habitats so well. So many holes. Afterwards, I did a little scan of our whole zoo and besides the skunks sparing many children, like really, it won't stop. And surprisingly, even a batch of prairie babies of our own right off the bat. Jeez Louise, you haven't been sleeping, huh? But yes, still no albinos yet. Anyways, our next habitat is going to be an amazing and huge one. But before that, I also offered some more food options that we provide to all our animals and got our vets to feed them immediately. Oh god. After curing a small little injury for our mom skunk, we looked through our guests, started new researches, and checked in for the night. Year 10. Almost halfway to the impending neglect and cat invasion, and I think a bigger habitat is due. In fact, big enough that I wanted a multi-species enclosure. Yes, some animals here can be compatible with one another, and building up some terrain, I knew I wanted to make a home for our North American beavers. Another true rodent. It's soon to be habitat friends, you will see in a bit. Anyways, what are beavers without dams? They're like cheese and pizza. So I wanted to kind of create their hard shelter into a wooden dam for the lake, so they can actually hide under it. With that established, I curved out a lake and a little creek that I wanted the water to leak onto, as well as closing everything with glass, before straightening everything out for the next very, very tedious part Part of the build, placing every single wood and log to make a natural, super sexy looking beaver dam. The big ones are layered to set the brown tone of the structure and just more and more logs over it, just like a damn wooden tiramisu. But guess what I did? I made another one. After sprinkling some rock salt over this whole meal of a lake, I added the special effects of ripples, crashing currents, and water flow to give this final lake look. I added the essentials for our water rodents and I guess we can finally buy our bitey friends and put them in. But wait, first this quick build of a rundown house with old rusted equipments and logs while climbable all around, simulating a sort of abandoned cabin once left to look over this beautiful lake. But now a perfect rummage to home our other residents. Raccoons! Not expecting these guys to be beaver friends, huh? And look, I bought one albino raccoon and even a melanistic one, which instead have higher levels of melanin causing its pigmentation to be fully black. And whoever was selling these had named them Cell, but they're my babies now, so you guys are now mine. Hope they make colorful babies. Oh, and I made another shelter because we have a lot of animals here. Then what's left was painting the correct textures and spending hours getting the perfect trees and plants into the habitat. Straight into the morning, I welcome you to our beaver and raccoon lakeside retreat. This will make me so much money, my gosh. Wait, are you sleeping or are you dead? Oh. In fact, death was in the air this morning because a few of our early animals are dying of old age. But on the other side, promise for the new generation is very high, and life in the zoo has been flourishing despite its issues. With a noise problem, my caracals have not been successfully mating at all though. As the years grew by, I finally unlocked one-way glass, helping animal comfort for our glass habitats. Discovered that I can customize my keeper's hats, haha <laughs> you dweeb, and our one rock still has some loyal followers. At this rate, we haven't been receiving enough money to reach our goal, so I need to do this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry people, I have to. But hey, no more reds. Nearing its final years, I can't help but to think about the terrors that our zoo will experience very soon. Capybaras, the largest rodent in the world and beloved by so many. They're just something about its round, stout little body. Anyways, I started with the standard inward habitat that I made for another circular mammal, the wombats. But I scrapped them and expanded the habitat into a longer field because I figured capybaras would have more appeal at this point. Sorry guys, you just didn't- wait, what is that? An albino raccoon, glowing white in the night of the creek, and already claiming the undergrowth as she quickly matured. The cunning Ava, you are our first albino. In fact, not long after, I spotted a new melanistic raccoon named Trinity, seemingly already forming a bond with Ava, but looked like it was way calmer than her, and just living life. In a series of fortunate events, finally our caracals have successfully birthed babies of their own too. No, oh, look at them, you little killer. I can see it in your eyes. Very soon, these baby caracalings will have their first hunt put into their habitat, so be ready. But before that, experimenting with water and decoration for our new habitat is due. I ended up with more shallow waters, did a little research and bought our capybaras. You are one expensive furry white meat blob. Anyways, my plan is to give this Marco as many girls as possible to increase our chances for albino capy babies. Then I started with more rocks, 
I know, surprise. I covered the whole scape and I know she's just judging me. And by selecting the water, you could use a feature that changes water color and even add mist. Oh man, there goes our hope for albino prairies. Okay, okay, with a green hot spring set for our animals and the rest of the rocks, I made a fitting castle that our beloved rodents could walk up to from the hill. Packed with their foods, watermelons, and their nesting beds. Since apparently capybaras like oranges, I use trees that have an orange accent to them matched with the bushes and litter that goes with it. And then it's done. The king now welcomes everyone. I need everyone to come here, so- Oh, wait, there you go. In spirits of our final true rodent's habitat, it's time for the hunt. There's no easy way to say this. I have too many baby skunks and I'll be releasing them into the caracal's den. This will test the capabilities of our juvenile cats and help with the population control. Or maybe I'm just making up excuses for being evil. The cats seem confused at first and our baby skunks quickly ran to the fields. Oh my god, I regret this. What have I done? Oh. He's killed one already. The others hit quickly, and both our adults took no time prowling the habitat. You don't know how many times they were so close to each other, I, I feel so bad, look at them. Suddenly, another one down. They were sly but stood no chance. Watching both his brothers die, he had no more faith, and I thought he deserved to survive, and I brought him back home. For his brothers, they found a worse fate, becoming cat poop. But let's cut to the chase, we need more money and a meaner predator, so we started our last and final cat villain. glorious tundra mountainscape for the Eurasian lynx. Okay, can these cats stop escaping, please? Anyways, they're an apex predator for many of the northern slopes, and a perfect villain to our story. In the end, they'll be released into the biggest enclosure. On the other side of the rainstorm, our capybaras has welcomed a trio of babies, all gathered from the rain for a little feast. Eat well, my children. No, please stay away from- Oh. We are approaching the days of the neglect, and my money has been coming up pretty good. We're so close. An ATM should give us a bit more, though. I did a little checkup for each of my animals, tweaked some stuff, seeing how unproblematic my badgers are, and to my absolute surprise, when looking into the cozy den, we have Tyson, Oliver, and another two, Olivia, and Watkins. Two more albinos, two more melanistics, and one super duper happy dad. Me, me I'm, I'm the dad. Our raccoons seem to be our lucky animals, now bonded through their meals and time around the cabin. Our capybaras also does not have a shortage of children. Look at them all enjoying the spring. I bet you smell so bad. We unlock many more enrichments through our research too, like these water taps that Papa Capybara here enjoys so much, and a teeny beaver dam that- Excuse me. Here you go, enjoy. Even our lynxes has had an offspring already, and even as a baby it looks like a mean uncle. Living life, huh? Watching our capybaras thrive and pop out babies, I could only ho hold up. Boom, another albino to rule these lands. Madam, I shall name you Planko. Ah, uh, mama, you should be proud of yourself. Look at you. Wait, another one? Okay, this one's named Bob. Anyways, I did more cleaning and maintenance for preparation when I stumbled upon... I can't. The cutest and my favorite one yet. Aw, yeah, you go, buddy. Nikolai, I'll leave you for now. If he doesn't survive the cats, I will smash my computer. But his dad, Louis, after passing down his beautiful genes to his son, died. Um, standing up? Anyways, it's time for the neglect. During this period, around three years will pass without any of my interference, and we'll see if my zoo is strong enough to maintain balance. Right after that, the cats will be released into these enclosures. But right before that, there was a sudden blizzard storm. First time ever throughout the years, and I had to quickly set up some heaters to defrost. And all what's left is speeding up the game and let the timer roll down. What in the? How is there so many of you guys? It's laggy. Apparently our capybaras had overpopulated so much and it's just too much for the planet zoo peoples. I quickly sold some and fixed the issue. Yeah, you're happy now, huh? And it seems for our neglect only a few of our old beavers and the otters pass away. Except for our prairie dogs. Yeah, they got wiped to zero. Other than that, our habitats and facilities are in great shape. Oh, it was Papa Capybara's time too. Then just after that, the cat invasion. I released my Eurasian lynxes into the beaver and raccoon haven, but to my surprise, after escaping a few times, swam around, even killed a beaver. They didn't seem too interested, and made themselves comfortable and played around with the raccoons a little bit. My caracals entered the badger's lair, took on a hunt, but Nikolai stood his ground. But that was not enough, and they got one casualty defending their burrows. After the time is done, the cats were sent back to their homes and a blossom at the end of chaos appeared. Our last albino, a cute little otter. And that's it, I've got everything on my list checked out and my zoo and its little rodents and mammals are thriving while looking more beautiful than ever. I had successfully managed 25 years building a zoo using only rodents and all my animal friends will live on throughout the years to come. Yes, even you wombats, I have a home for you too. I let the zoo continue on and I never look back. Thanks for watching, bye! Ching, 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 ching.